Hey everybody, Zach again, NewTutorial.com, coming in, making a video for you today. First off, sorry about the horrible picture quality that you're seeing right now on camera. Uh, my webcam bit the dust. It was on its way out anyway, and um, I, we went ahead and ordered a new one coming in soon, hopefully. Uh, so I had to go back in my storage and find an old webcam that still worked. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I wanted to do a video on talking about why God allows things like this to happen. When I mean like this, I've had a number of emails over the last year uh, after Jamie's passing and people who were either in the same circumstance or who watched our circumstance and who were really distraught by all this and seeing uh, the suffering that Jamie went through and us asking for healing and for prayer and those prayers seemingly going unanswered. And that's had a, a lot of people have struggled because of that. And it's hurt their faith. Some of them, some people who have emailed me and claimed that. And, um, or they're going through their own issue, their own circumstance, and they're praying and they're asking the Father for intervention and for healing, and they're just not seeing it. And they're wondering why, 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 does, why does God allow these things to happen? And so that's what I want to try to get into today and hopefully alleviate some of your issues. And I want you to be able to have your faith strengthened from this video after we get into everything I want to get into. Number one, let me start off by saying Jamie has an amazing article that she published a couple months before she died, okay? And it's linked in the description below. It kind of goes into this. It, it talks about this. Why? That question, why? And then it's okay to not have an answer for that. Really insightful. Uh, one of the best articles she's ever written. She wrote so many great articles. Um, so check that out, first off. Then I want to talk about how I'm a, I'm a member of a number of different widow widower groups online. And uh, there's a couple different groups. There's one on Facebook that, that is really active. And in these groups, God is not very popular. There's a lot of people who are very angry at God within these groups for understandable reasons. You know, they also prayed for healing or they were people of, you know, faith or they had, you know, semi-faith. They, they, they maybe went to church every once, once in a while. But during these times in their life when their spouse is dying, they're going to God and they're asking for mercy and for, for healing and they don't get it. And so God is not very popular in these groups. A lot of people have basically say that they have lost their faith during these times. And that that is interesting. So the, when I take that into consideration, and I take into consideration the emails that I've gotten uh, from a number of you um, over the course of the last year, having uh, expressed your discomfort and your discouragement, what comes to mind is that scene from the Alamo. In the movie, the Alamo, okay, I'm talking about the John Wayne Alamo, not the Billy Bob Thornton Alamo. I'm talking about the real, see, when John Wayne makes a movie, it should be like, that's it. That's the only movie that can be made on that topic. <laughs> I think there should be a law. But there's that scene in the movie, the Alamo, there's a pastor who uh, is with a, a teenage boy and they get off a horse <clears throat> and they're looking for San Antonio and they find it. And the pastor gets off his horse, grabs his Bible and begins, begins to give thanks. And I want you to watch the clip. Let's watch the clip. You don't take a wrong answer all these questions, Parson. No, boy, that's how you learn, asking. Yes, sir. And so many times every day you stop and give thanks. Mostly I can't catch on to what you're thanking the Lord for. I mean, there's nothing special. I give thanks for the time and the place. The time and place, Parson? A time to live and a place to die. That's all any man gets. No more, no less. A time to live and a place to die. That's all any man gets. No more, no less. He's quoting from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And it's amazing to me because a lot of people forget this. This is all we got. It's appointed once for a man to die. You're not getting out of here. I'm not getting out of here either. The clock is ticking <clears throat> and it is undefeated. It is undefeated, and it will win. And we only have a limited time to do with what we had. That's, a, you know, the whole parable of the talents. What did you do with what you were given during your time? That's a hard, that's a hard question to answer sometimes when we look at the, the world around us. We get so distracted by everything that we forget. We're just here. We're just a vapor. And then it, it's gone. Psalms 91. Psalms 91, you know, when people are facing disease and facing things like what we faced, 
this is a, a chapter of the book of Psalms that often comes up. In fact, somebody even gave us a whole book on Psalms 91 filled with amazing testimonies of all these people who claim the promises of Psalms 91 and who are miraculously healed. And it sits on my shelf out there. And it's kind of disgusting, really, because so many people, what about the millions of people who claimed those promises or who prayed for those promises to be delivered in their life and they didn't receive it? What happens to those people? Meanwhile, they hear about these other people who had so, and, and Jamie talks about this in our article. It's like, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? That's a, that's a horrible, horrible application for that chapter. Psalms 91, ladies and gentlemen, is for the resurrection because they're gonna, there's going to come a time where there's a raising of the just and the unjust, and there will be a very vast difference between the two. And you're going to have people who are raised in newness of life, and you're going to have those who are dead still in their sins. And it's those people who are, the, the people who are raised in newness of life, who are delivered from the pestilence that killed them before, that killed their flesh. I love Psalms 103. Psalms 103 is amazing, and I've often quoted it because, you know, that uh, uh, the verse, I think it's uh, verse 17, where it talks about, who are all these mercies from everlasting to everlasting for? It's for those who are obedient, who keep his commandments, the next verse says. And we, we read that, we read that chapter. It's an amazing chapter. Let's look at some of the verses. As for man, his days are as a grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. But the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. We are like a flower in the field that comes up in the spring and summer, and we flourish, and then the cold fall winds come, and that flower withers and fades, and the place remembers it no more. Because the next spring, more flowers come up, more blades of grass come up, and then they wither and fade. And then new ones come up each spring, each summer, and then they wither and fade. And the place remembers them no more. But see, God remembers. And I love the, the next part of that chapter. Next verse, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. It's like, but the mercy of the Lord. See, the mercy is he remembers. The place where you are at remembers you no more because you're gone. You've withered and faded. You're gone. But he remembers because that's his mercy. He remembers those who are righteous. <clears throat> that's where our hope and faith needs to lie in, folks. This mortal body is going to go away. And that's okay because he remembers. He remembers who, who his flowers in the field were, who his blades of grass were, the ones he cares for, the ones he has mercy on. He will remember those. And see, that's where our hope and promises should rely, should be focused on. And so many people are worried about the here and now. I'm not worried about the here and now. And when at the end, you know, we were so confused by all this. And at the end, we figured this out. You know, it's amazing. Psalms 23, everyone quotes Psalms 23 when they come into problems of life, come into challenges, and, and, and they, have, uh, um, they, have, they have to deal with adversaries. They quote Psalms 23. But did you notice this one part of the verse? Let's read it. He restores my soul. He restores my soul, and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You see, for the soul to be restored, there has to be a new body for the soul to be restored to. The old body must pass away, and then the soul, at some point, will be restored. See, this Psalms 23 isn't for now. This isn't a promise for now in this life. Because it says at the end of the chapter, you're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This isn't for now. We don't have this promise now. The soul will be restored to a new body that is raised in newness of life that will never be taken away. It will never have the pestilence again that, that Psalms, 23, uh, Psalms 91 is talking about. It will never have that disease. It's, I don't, it's amazing to me. I think it's either Josephus or Ezra, uh, one of those two books, talk about how when the resurrection happens, when the trumpet sounds, Ezra, if you don't know, it's part of the Apocrypha. Um, it's claimed to be written by Ezra, um, but it's his, supposedly his second work. And, um, and then I think it's Josephus has some really good um, writings on what happens after you, after you pass away and then also on the resurrection. So I'm not sure which one. I have to go back and look. But either way, one of those, one of those two people wrote about how in the, in the resurrection, those who are raised still in sin, 
they still have their old bodies. They still have their old bodies that were diseased, uh, the things that killed them, <clears throat> the wounds, if they died from, from an infliction of some kind of wound, they, they still have that because they have not been given their new body, their new in, uncorruptible body, their uncorrupted flesh now. That, to me, it makes you wonder about all the mass conditioning of the zombie stuff that we have in our society today. Maybe there's some truth to that, the undead. All that aside, don't want to get sidetracked. <laughs> but I, I hope this encourages you to understand that, guys, what we're seeing here today, we can't be, we can't be concerned with our flesh that we have here now because it's going to die. It's going to be uh, corrupted. It's going to be diseased. It can be killed. But see, there's going to be a time when none of that will happen again, when the soul is restored. Um, I, I keep thinking back about um, uh, an event in my childhood. My mom was making me listen to a uh, Christian comedian, Ken Davis, um, and he was very uncomfortable. He talked about a time where he was very uncomfortable around a friend who was dying of cancer, and the friend knew that he was uncomfortable. And so he asked him about it, and he said, yeah, it's because you're dying. And the friend with cancer replied and said, we're all dying. The only diff difference between you and me is that God has told me when. And it's so true. You know, we're all going to pass away, and some of us are going to pass away under vastly different circumstances. Some of us are going to pass away um, before, you know, what others consider to be our time, you know, earlier than others. That, that's going to happen. It's appointed once for a man to die, and then the judgment. What are you going to do with the time you got? Paul mentions four times in his letters about running the race. I believe it's four times. Running the race. You have a race to run. Jamie uh, ran an amazing race. She ran an amazing race. And she finished the finish line. She didn't win the race. Messiah already did that. But she crossed the finish line. We have to determine whether or not we're going to finish that race too. And in these trying times when everything is pulling on you to question your faith, Hold tight, folks. Hold tight. We'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.